Trump was indicted. We talked about that the other day on Secular Talk, also on Breaking Points. You guys talked about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, second indictment now, seven charges he's being brought up on. And um, over the classified documents case in particular, that's like, you know, the genesis and the heart of of this. They're going after him for obstruction and all sorts of stuff. But vis-a-vis that issue. Uh, Well, Ron DeSantis, as you predicted, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't... Instacup. It didn't take a genius to see what he was going to do. He woke up in the morning and chugged a giant juice, a giant glass of Instacup juice. (laughs) (laughs) And so uh, he comes out and says, the weaponization of federal law enforcement represents a mortal threat to a free society. We have for years witnessed an uneven application of the law depending upon political affiliation. I'm going to come back to that point in a second. Why so zealous in pursuing Trump, yet so passive about Hillary or Hunter? The DeSantis administration will bring accountability to the DOJ, excise political bias, and end weaponization once and for all. So, first of all, the the idea of a two-tier justice system and it's based on political affiliation. To the extent we have a two-tier justice system, which we do, there's a class angle to it, and there's also a racial angle to it. The idea that it's like, you guys go way too hard on Republicans and way too soft on Democrats. I just don't, I fundamentally do not buy that. I don't buy that for a second. The reason why Trump, if Trump handed over all the documents when he was told you got to hand over all the documents, we'd be done because he has the privilege of being a former president and they're going to bend over backwards to not go after him. Yeah. But since he went the extra mile to spit in their eye, snub his nose up at the process, hide the documents, do all sorts of sketchy stuff, that's why he is where he is. He has nobody to blame but Donald Trump. The other thing I would say is if you were going to make an argument about a political bias, it would definitely go in the other direction. And you can compare the law enforcement treatment of left-wing protesters versus the law enforcement treatment of right-wing protesters on January 6th. Like, if it was Antifa that was storming into the Capitol, do you think they would have been, like, led around on a sightseeing tour the way that some of the January 6th people were and barricades opened for them, et cetera, et cetera? Exactly. So he comes out and says this. Um, thinking, which by the way, the, the political logic of it, like him and his staffers are idiots. Here you have an opportunity at the very least to go out there and be like, look, I'm the no drama candidate. If you want to win, if you're serious about winning, I'm the guy. I don't have two indictments. I'm not going to end up in prison. So maybe I'm the guy. I don't think you could do that politically though. I mean, that's the problem is. But that's the weak argument. He's not even going in in that scenario. But remember last time when the, uh, I believe it was when Mar-a-Lago was raided. DeSantis tried to just not say anything, and it became a huge political problem for him instantly. And he was super late to saying anything, and then ultimately, because there was so much pressure on him, he ends up cutting himself. Like, I don't think there's a lane to win in the Republican base by going against Donald Trump on these charges, but then that just demonstrates there is no lane really to win in the Republican primary at all. That might be true. But if there's any hope, you have to provide a counter argument and you have to weather the initial outcry. Remember, when Trump first went after DeSantis, there was an outcry against Trump. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like, whoa, and the polls shifted in the other direction. But then Trump kept doing it and eventually was like, okay, this is what he does. And then he went back up in the polls. So for DeSantis, it's like you have to be a man. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to make some argument here. It's, this is just total, I'm going to bend my knee and kiss your ring. Yeah. And I'm, that's so cuck. You're never going to win like that. I, I hear you. I just think that ship has sailed. Like, no, I'm saying you could be right. Yeah. But if you are not right, the path to victory is not Cucky McCuckington. The path to victory is like, look, I'm the serious candidate. I'm here to win. I'm the no drama guy. I wasn't indicted twice. I'm not going to end up in prison. You guys want to vote for a guy who's going to end up in prison where you're going to lose the general election? Have at it. But if you don't want to, I'm the serious one. Come to me. Yeah. I just don't see that working. So anyway, he cucks himself. Yeah. Then the Trump people still are like, Screw you. Yeah, they think they're still like, you didn't go far enough. What did you gain? He's such a clown. So Richard Grinnell, I guess a Trump sycophant, he comes out and says, Ron DeSantis says nothing should be done about the DOJ's partisanship unless he is president. That is not what he said. That's what you read into it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't call for an end to the Trump witch hunts. There's no call to action now. This is a strategic blunder from a Tallahassee team used to dealing with an overwhelming majority of Republicans. You just want Ron DeSantis to, like, suck on his scrotum. That's what you're telling me. That's what this means. Yeah, well, you had, um, you know, he didn't go as far as, like, Vivek Ramaswamy, who was like, I'll, I would pardon Trump instantly. And, you know, no, it's not enough to just, like, theoretically take his side in the, you know, on the politics of this and on the, like, weaponization of the government. 
view of all of this, it's like you have to go all the way in or it's not enough for them. That's just, that's amazing. We've never seen anything like this. It really is something incredible where like twice indicted former president, clear scumbag, clear criminal, and all of the establishment voices in the party are just worshiping at his feet. Yeah. And, and this is when we, you and I know behind the scenes, behind closed doors, they're like, yeah, I hope that this works and we get this guy out of the way. Yeah, they all would love for him to be gone, but nobody will actually do anything. And the ones who will say anything have no shot in hell. Like Asa Hutchinson. Yeah. Was he said Trump should not? He should he step said down he should from step running. Down. Yeah. Chris Christie has said has basically you know demurred and said we'll wait and see what the facts are. But he's gone aggressively after Trump on a variety of things, and I certainly could see him going after him on this. Remains to be seen what, you know, Mike Pence is going to say. Pence was actually surprisingly pretty forceful against Trump in his um, launch speech, which I wasn't, frankly, expecting. But Tim Scott immediately comes down and is like, Well, he know, wants to be VP, I think. Totally on Trump's side. He wants to be Vivek VP. Ramaswamy, you know? like I said. I think Nikki Haley also hasn't said anything, but she'll take the DeSantis route as well and say similar things, backing him up. And um, it, it, it's just, look... Republicans, to the extent that they ever had an opportunity to get rid themselves of Trump, right you know, I think, 6, I right think right after, after January 6th yeah. was probably the best chance. And right after the midterms, I think. And you had Mitch McConnell sort of float like, maybe I will try to, you know, whip Republicans in the Senate to actually convict him for these charges. He put, sort of put out there this trial balloon. And after they let it go for like a week or two <clears> and didn't, didn't really go out and do what it takes and try to marshal the army and have some sort of unified force... It just slid right back into, well, this was actually Antifa, or if it was our people, like, they're patriots, you know, and this then they were sightseeing, right? And before you knew it, the, the little moment when there was maybe an opening is gone. And so, I, I don't know, I just feel like that ship has, has really sailed quite a while ago. So if you were going to come out now and be like, no, I actually think this was a crime, and I actually think this is a problem... There's no way the base is going to follow you. They overwhelmingly yeah. think these are witch hunts, that the deep state is out to get him, that it's all a plot just to keep him from being president again, that he should be president now, and that it was stolen from him. I mean, that's what they think. And to the extent there were ever opportunities to disabuse people of this of that notion, they never actually seize on them and take them. So DeSantis and all the rest of them are just hoping that something happens that is unforeseen, that knocks him off course, but they all have to know in their heart of hearts, like they don't actually individually have the ability to knock him out. A, a point where we may disagree is that I actually think there's a chance that a deal is cut where it's like you stop running for president and all this goes away. I, I'm very skeptical of that. And I mean, for one thing, like that is actually what the Trump team team would argue the DOJ is doing is the, that this whole thing is about trying to keep him out of the White House again and it's all actually political so if there was to be some sort of deal like that it would have to be floated by the Trump side I don't think the DOJ could float something like that and I'm just I don't know I'm just sort of skeptical that you would mix a criminal process and a political process in that overt uh, fashion now what yeah. Ryan floated I wonder what you think about this. When I was talking to Ryan Grimm for um, our Breaking Points coverage, he was like, Biden, what he thinks Biden should do is allow the process to play out. Mm -hmm. If Trump's convicted, let him serve like a week in prison and then pardon him. He felt like that's like, you know, then you, there's some level of accountability, but you, you know, don't go through like, the full, like, political rending of the country. And I think that's whatever. dumb, because then Trump will get out, continue to run for president, and maybe win. Maybe. I think the only way, well... But that could be the deal. There's like, a, that's where the deal could come in, is like, I'll pardon you if you step aside. Oh, I see, what, oh, I see what you're saying, I see what yeah. you're saying. Uh, look, I think there's a 99% chance, or, okay, let me calm down a little bit. 95% chance Trump wins the nomination. I think the most likely way he loses is if he goes to prison. That's another one where you disagree with me, where you think he could win from a prison cell. Yeah, I That's do. That's amazing. I also think um, probably the Republican primary process will be so advanced <laughs> At the point that there would be any yeah, conviction. That's a fair that, point. That's a fair point. Yeah. I hope that's not true, but I think that's a fair point. And by the way, just so everybody understands, really fascinating fact. 99.6% conviction rate when the feds go after you. 
99.6. Yeah. So this is to your point last night when I was like, do you think they have a slam dunk case even on the original claims? Yeah. I know the obstruction stuff is like slam dunk. But you're like, I think even on the original they do because they wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. All the evidence points in that direction. 99.6% conviction rate. Well, we are, we have now, we already knew about this tape that theoretically existed that CNN had reported on that was like him bragging about some like Iran war plans, right. basically like how we would attack Iran it was worse than that he thought. was bragging about. And now they have the transcript and he directly says like, I could have declassified them when I was president, but I didn't. I and mean, then, just like, and I mean, then he also says, look, come look at him. Right. And, and which is worse than I thought the tapes were going to be. And he says like, this is very secret. This is secret stuff. You know? So it's like every, <laughs> and the reason the declassification part is important for people who haven't followed all of the ins and outs of this is one of the arguments that they were planning to use in their defense was that he was commander in chief. Any documents that he took, he had already declassified. So there's no crime here. Now, that may have already been not a great defense because the particular section they're using doesn't technically require it being classified, et cetera. You know, he didn't go through the formal process that may be necessary, et cetera, et cetera. But they were thinking that might be a defense. But if you have him on tape being like, this document right here, which is type top secret, is not declassified. I could have declassified it, but I didn't. That's, you know, that's probably going to be a challenge for him in terms of his defense would be my my uninformed non uh, lawyer view of the situation grab the popcorn yeah hey y'all do me a favor and like and subscribe it helps out big time in the algorithm click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now you know you want to